Hi folks, I want to do a real quick refresher on file input and output syntax. Um, back in your intro to programming or intro to computer science class, you may have learned how to do file inputs in this style that I'm showing you here on the screen, where you've got a variable and then you assign to it the results of calling this open function. And open would take the name of the file on your hard drive as well as a mode, this R thing here, and then assign this creates a file variable a type of file um, you assign it to this variable then you do some stuff with the contents of the file and then finally you close the file you opened it you better close it right and there's there's good programmatic reasons for doing that I want to show you and maybe some of you have already seen this but I want to make sure that everyone is using this style of interacting with files it's a little bit more concise. It uh, takes care of closing the file for you, which is nice. And also, it's good for error handling. And you know, maybe you haven't seen why that's so important yet, and that's OK. But just know that this style over here that I'm about to go over with you is best practice. It's what you should use. And that's what I'm going to expect you to use in this course. So let me go over the details of it in code. Uh, all the important kind of stuff I'm going to talk about here in just a second is on this slide, which you can go through at your leisure. So come back here, review this, make sure you understand the syntax and this way of operating with files. Okay, so let me switch over to PyCharm and show you an example. I'm going to drag myself down to the bottom real quick before I get going. Okay, so uh, how does this work? Usually when you're reading files, at least in in our class, you are going to be dealing with text files. So things where you can just open it up and look at it. Well, let me show you this one. So I've opened names.txt and it's just a bunch of names, one per line, right? Um, these things are strings in Python land. I think I've got about a hundred of them in here. So we're going to do a lot of reading of files in this class to get some interesting data that we're going to crunch and do stuff with. Um, and they're all going to be text files in our class. There can be other types of files. We're not too worried about them right now. Um, so how do you read this file? Well, I'm going to show you the new style of doing it. Okay, so the new style is going to be, we're going to use a keyword with. So this is the keyword. Uh, you start a with, open, and this open function call t has two parameters. The first is the name of the file. Uh, and my file is names.txt, this guy right here. I'm in files.py right now, names.txt. For simplicity's sake, the files that you're reading from or writing to, keep them in the same directory as your Python script. They don't have to be there, but helps, keeps things simple and tidy, okay? The second parameter to this function is the mode, right? There are three modes that we care about. We care about reading, which is R, we're just going to read data from the file, uh, W, which is for writing, and A, which is short for append. Okay, we'll talk about writing in just a second. But we want to read from this file. Okay, Now, this is a function that returns a file object. The next little keyword, as, assigns that file to a variable that we can then manipulate with other Python code. I'm going to name my variable input file, and then I terminate the line with a colon, okay? So input file here is a variable. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it x, you can call it name file, doesn't matter. I'm just happening to call mine input file, okay? Now when I go to the next line, you'll see that it's been indented for me, okay? The width is a block kind of like a for loop or a while loop or an if statement. There's stuff that goes inside the width, right? So what we are going to do is we're just going to read that file line by line. Okay, how do you do that? You use a for loop. So for example, for uh, line in input file, let's do something. Let's just be very simple and print out the line that we read. Okay, this is your basic for each loop, for each line in the input file. Line is a variable. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it name. It's up to you. You can call it line, whatever you want, right? It's a variable. 
but this variable is going to take on row by row the string that it reads from each line. Okay, So it is going to read each line of this file as a string that is terminated by the new line character. Right? So whoops, uh, name will take on as a string each line of the file ending with a backslash n, the new line character, right? And the new line character is what tells Python and all sorts of other programs, go to the next line, right? So after you get the characters for the word Michael, go down to the next line, right? Okay, so if I run this, it's just going to regurgitate to me the contents of the file. Right? Now you may notice there's actually two new lines here. It's, it's go into the next line and then it goes to the next line again. Well, why does it do that? Well, the value of name here is like, for example, Alicia backslash n. That's the string that it is read in. So it puts a new line at the end of that string. But then also, if you recall, print, uh, the print function also automatically at the end of it does a backslash n. So if you don't want that extra backslash n, the thing to do is to strip this guy, right? Uh, if you watch the, the string video, we talk about stripping strings. Now if we read this, there we go, we get what we expect, okay? Writing to files is exactly the same. Actually, let me go back. For those of you who learned how to open and read files in the old style, this line here is exactly the same as doing input file gets open names.txt for reading. This line and this line are the same. The difference is that once you exit out of this block, like say once you get here, this is going to now be automatically close the file for you. Great. You don't have to worry about it. And also, if you made some sort of error here and Python crashes out and all red stuff, that file will still close for you. That's a good thing, okay? That's a good thing, as Martha Stewart would say. All right, writing with the to a file, same thing. Same sort of format. Um, I've already made a list here, a list of strings. Let me, uh, excuse me, sorry, just got to check the time real fast. I've got a list of strings here. I want to write this list of strings to the file. Let's do that. Uh, syntax format going to look the same. With open, uh, let's write to states.txt, that will be the name of the file, and our mode is going to be w for write. Okay. Now I need to define the name of the variable where this file is going to live. I'll call it um, output. Okay, That will be the name of my variable. Now before I go any further, I want to go over here and show you, I actually already have states.txt. And it's just got some random numbers in it. Beware that when you write a file with a W here, you are going to destroy anything that already exists in your file. It's going to truncate it, empty it out, fancy word for make it empty, and then fill it back in. Okay. Well, let's write. So what I would like to do is I want to write each one of these states into the file. Well, this is a list, so let me loop over the list with a for loop, uh, for state in states, I want to write. How do I write to a file? Very simple. I take the file variable and I say output dot write and then the string I want to write. Okay, Outputting, writing to a file always takes a string parameter. If you try and write integers or floats or something, it's going to scream at you unless you convert it to a string first. Okay, so uh, that should do it. Let's run it. Okay, um, I'm still getting my output from reading it in. The actual writing of the file itself does not produce any output. If I comment out the reading of the file, no output. Okay, let me go over to states. Okay, first thing, um, maybe this isn't quite what I expected, right? It looks like I've got all my states here, but they're all crammed on one line. Why is that? Think about it for a second. Um, the other thing you'll notice is the random numbers that I had in here before are gone. The W mode got rid of them all. Okay. 
So this isn't quite right though. What I really want is one per line here. So how do I realize that? Well, I am writing strings here. What do I need to put at the end of a string in order to tell programs, hey, I want you to actually go to the next line. There's a special character. That special character is the new line. Okay, So these strings don't have new lines at the end of them. I need to add them manually. Well, one way I can do that is through string concatenation. right? So I take state, I concatenate to the end this backslash n. This gives me basically a new string that's going to look like, you know, say, uh, Alaska backslash n. And now it's going to write it out. So let's rerun our code. And I'm using the keyboard shortcut to rerun always. You can right click and, and do it yourself. If I go over to states now, things look the way I want. Okay, so whirlwind tour of this style of reading and writing from files. This is what I'm going to expect you to use in the course. Uh, study it. Make sure you understand what's going on here. Okay, take care.